The bench power supply, or variable power supply, is one of the most useful tools you can have on your electronics workbench. In fact, many engineers consider it to be essential. You can use it to test components, give power to projects, or prototypes even when you haven't designed the power section yet, and make some creative art. Be careful with that last one. Their main function is to convert AC to DC and provide an adjustable DC voltage supply. Some models can provide constant current, but other models like this X-Tech can only do constant voltage up until the current limit is reached, and we'll explore that last feature later. To use a basic bench power supply, you'll set a desired voltage level, like 3 volts, and set a limit on how much current the supply can provide. The supply will then provide as much current as required by the circuit in order to maintain that voltage up to the current limit. Most bench power supplies are similar in appearance and have similar controls. Most will have a grounded metal case and a place to plug in an AC power cord. On the front, you'll likely see two displays, one for voltage and the other for current. Some will have knobs and others will have buttons that are used to set the voltage and current limits. This unit also has some buttons that allows us to turn the output on and off, adjust the voltage and current ranges, and review our settings. This last button, UVL, stands for Upper Voltage Limit, and it lets us manually adjust the maximum voltage the supply can output. It could be used as an extra safety precaution for some sensitive circuits, but we won't really need it for basic operation. We'll leave it at 39 volts, which is above the rated maximum output voltage. This switch allows us to turn the supply on and off, and these ports accept standard 4mm banana plugs. The power supply will try to maintain the desired voltage between the ports. Note that some power supplies have more than two ports. This one in particular has two sets of three ports. You'll sometimes see a ground port that is connected to earth ground. It works as a convenience if you need to ground a chassis or make sure that your test circuit has a common node with real ground. It's important to note that the positive and negative terminals are isolated or floating with respect to earth ground, which means that neither positive nor negative are connected in any way with ground. It also allows us to set a reference voltage. You could run a wire or cable between ground and the negative terminal if you wanted to have a known voltage above ground, this coming from the positive terminal. Or you could connect ground to the positive terminal if you wanted to have a negative voltage when compared to ground. But enough theoretical talk, let's see how to use it. To start, make sure the power supply is plugged in and turn on the main power switch. If you try adjusting the knobs, nothing will happen. That's because the output is currently off. For this X-Tech unit, you'll want to select the voltage and current range. Since I won't need anything over 3 volts for this demo, I'll keep it on 16 volts and 5 amps. Next, hold down the review button and turn the knobs to set the desired voltage and current limit. We'll set the voltage to about 3 volts and the current limit to about 1 amp, which we shouldn't really hit in this demo. Then, we'll connect our circuit. In this case, I'm using a simple resistor as a load. Press the output on button and the power supply will give 3 volts across the terminals. Because this is a 100 ohm resistor, according to Ohm's law, we should see about 30 milliamps flowing through it. And sure enough, the power supply reports that it's providing about 30 milliamps. Something to note about most power supplies, the display is not super accurate. If we test the voltage across the terminals with a multimeter, we see that it's off by a few millivolts. Similarly, the voltage across the terminals is not the same as the voltage across the alligator clips. That's because there is some resistance in the wires. For this power supply, it doesn't matter too much because I can only adjust voltage in about 10 millivolt increments anyway, so just assume that the voltage and current readings are accurate to about 0.01. Another thing we can do with power supplies is test LEDs without needing to use a current limiting resistor, as we can manually set a limit on the current and the power supply will continue to function. Let's take this blue LED for example. We know that it has a forward voltage of about 3.4 volts. So we'll hold down the review button and set the voltage to something above 3.4 volts. We'll use 4 volts. 
Then we'll adjust the current to something well below its rated current of 30 milliamps. 10 milliamps should do it. Attach the negative clip to the cathode and the positive clip to the anode and turn on the output. You should see the LED light up. You'll also notice that we've maxed out the current on the supply. It won't go above the about 10 milliamp limit we set. The constant current light should come on, telling us that we've hit our current limit and that the supply is now acting as a constant current source. To act as a constant current source, you'll see that the voltage drops from our set 4 volts to around 3 volts, which is the forward voltage required to pass 10 milliamps of current through the LED. Benchtop power supplies can be extremely handy when testing and debugging circuits, especially if you think there might be a bad regulator or a bad battery. I also like to use mine to test the undervoltage lockout feature on a lot of battery regulators just by slowly turning down the voltage while it's connected to the regulator's input. This is useful for designing circuits that need to prevent LiPo batteries from draining too far. If you're doing some serious design work with electronics, I highly recommend picking up a benchtop power supply. You can find basic ones and used ones for tens of dollars all the way up through thousands of dollars for very accurate ones and those that have a lot of features.